Hey there, welcome to the 44th Easy JavaScript tutorial part of EasyProgramming.net. In the past, we've looked at how to debug JavaScript. Let's go a little further by looking at the try-catch block. Uh, in the next tutorial, we'll cover the throw function, which allows you to control uh, what error messages your user sees. So the try-catch block is meant to allow you to uh, try a block of code and allow you to define a purpose if it fails. This allows for cleaner and better error handling. By cleaner, I mean that you can actually control what error messages your user sees by using throw, something I'll cover in the next tutorial. Uh, the try-catch block can throw five different types of errors uh, and two properties. The properties are always name and message, which I'll cover briefly. And the five errors are a range error, a reference error, a syntax error, type error, and URI error. Uh, some of these are much more common than the others. So we're going to quickly go over the syntax and give you an example of some of these errors, uh, not all of them, and just to give you an example of uh, some practice of how the try-catch block works. So the syntax of the try-catch block looks something like this. You start out with the JavaScript keyword try, um, and in a curly braces, you input a block of code to run, whether it's a for loop, whether it's um, you know some basic math. Uh, if that fails, you will include a catch uh, function here, and in and it takes one argument, which is the error. Um, and inside curly braces, you do something with the code if the code can't run or returns an error. The error parameter can be used to get the name and the message. So you can do something like error.name or an error.message, and it'll give you exactly what the error is. And finally, there is a finally keyword, which you can use uh, in curly braces after the catch. And this code will always run no matter what. Uh, so for example, if you're uh, running a loop and it runs only five times, and then it and then it fails. You catch the error, you display the error, and then finally, it'll always say, you know, the loop has finished because whether it ran once or twice or even no times, it'll just say, you know, we finished that block of code. So let's take a quick look at an example of what the try catch block looks like. So I have a variable here called a, and I made it equal to five. Uh, in my HTML at the bottom here, I have a span output here. Uh, right now it's displaying 50 because I was testing earlier. Uh, and which I have here, document.getElementById.output. And the inner text is displaying A times B. Uh, as you can see, just something is already wrong. So if I update and run, nothing happens here. So where's the error? So if I look at my element inspector, look at my console, it says uncaught reference error. Again here, reference error. B is not defined. That's correct. B is not defined. So if I do var b equals to 10, if I run it, error is gone, and there you go, it's 50. But sometimes you forget, sometimes you let your users do something, uh, and they forget to input a value. Uh, this is not just great for your end users, but for yourself as a developer as well. So let's put all of this around try catch and see what happens. So we'll do var a over there. So we'll just do try and in curly braces. I'm just gonna cut and paste this over here. We'll do a times b. And we'll do catch and in and the argument here is I'm gonna call it e. You can call it error, you can call it whatever you want, it's just a placeholder. And in curly braces I'm gonna do um, let me see, copy this over. So if I can't run it, I'll do document dot get element by ID output inner text equals to uh, there was a. So we'll do e dot name. So this is the name of the error. Concatenate. Sorry, struggling a little bit. Uh, the message is we'll do e dot message. Again, that's the other property of the error. And then let's just close it up. There we go. So, so if I do update and run now, it says there was a reference error. The message is B is not defined. So it no longer appears in the console. So if I get rid of that, if I click run, there you go. So a regular user will not know to open up your JavaScript console. So if there is a reference error, if they're filling out a form and they forgot to input a value, uh, they won't have the sense to open their console because most users don't know that the JavaScript console even exists and that you can use it for debugging. So 
you do this, you catch their error, and you display it in the UI for them, and they know uh, that there's reference error and B is not defined. Uh, sure, this is a little bit obscure, and in the next tutorial, I'll show you where you can use the throw function to uh, set custom error messages for your users. Now let's cover the finally block. So we'll do finally. Uh, it doesn't take any parameters. So we'll just do finally. Uh, let me just do document element by ID. I'm just going to copy and paste. What I'm going to do is we're going to do concatenate. Uh, do add a line break. We'll do this line always runs. There we go. And if I update and run, there you go. There's an error, and then there's this line always runs. It's because I did enter text. Let me do enter HTML. Run. There you go. This line always runs. There's no error in the console, but the error is in the UI. Uh, so now, as an end user, I see all B is not defined. Let's say it's a form, so I'll do you know var B equals to ten. If I update and run, there you go. I get the 50, and this line always runs. So now it did not run. Uh, the catch did not run because there was no error. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, one thing I'll mention about the syntax error is that you can't really get it here without using the eval function in JavaScript, uh, which pretty much checks your JavaScript syntax before it runs. Uh, so I'm not going to cover that. You'll you, you'll get it uh, eventually if you. Uh, start working with try catch. Uh, the only other one I'm going to quickly cover is the type error. Um, this is also possible when you're trying to do something with the type of your variable, which it is not. So let's say I had declared a over here and a is a, you know, it's five. So we'll do a hello. So what's wrong with this? I'm trying to treat a like a function, um, even though it's not, it's, it's, a, it's just a number. It's an integer. Now if I update and run, this runs and then I get a type error in my JavaScript console. So what I can do is we can do try. Let's copy and paste it over here and I'll do catch. Let's do E. And then I'll do something similar to this. I'm just going to copy and paste. But this time I'll concatenate and add a line break. And I shall actually do HTML so that it actually asks the line break. Uh, I'm not going to do it finally. Let's update and run. No error in the console. Let me get rid of this and run it again. No error in the console. Uh, my 50 runs. This line always runs, which is the finally. And there was a type error. The message is A is not a function. Of course, you can play with the wording. Make sure that uh, it's it's readable for your users. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, the try catch block. Uh, it's extremely useful for error handling, not just for your end users, but for yourself. I use it all the time uh, as a way to uh, keeping myself honest because, like any other developer, I am prone to mistakes, whether it's a typo or uh, just me you know, just screwing up. Um, if you have any questions about the try catch block, try catch finally, uh, let me know. I'm happy to answer. Come back for the next tutorial where I will cover the throw function, which comes in with the try catch, and show you how you can spit out your own custom errors, throw out your own errors. Uh, thanks for watching. Remember to visit easyprogramming.net for more tutorials. Have a good one.